WBLS 107.5, of course, the Circle of Sisters 2016. I'm Titi Torres with Mona Scott Young. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? You look good. Oh, thank you. When, I, when you walked in today, I was like, wow, did you <laughs> was some it, pounds? Was or? it the bright outfit? It was a bright <laughs> outfit, and you look <laughs> skinny. I'm like, did oh, she do like well, a thank not, you. Like, no. Not that you were like. Super bad no, no, no. I've kind of gone up and down. I've been yeah. a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Well, you look good. I'm not going to front on that. <laughs> no, thank you. I feel good. Thank I, you. I love the colors. Oh, thanks. It, this is my mixed blue. You know, I've yeah. got the mix and mingle lounge out there. Yeah. So I always try to represent in yeah. the, the blue color. Well, you have a lot of things going on. How many shows you're up to producing now? You have the Love & Hip Hop franchise. The Love & Hip Hop franchise, and of course, we're in three cities, New York, you, Atlanta, Los Angeles. You got Money, Power, Respect. Money, Power, Respect, which just started airing this Thursday on WeTV. Uh -huh. So it airs every Thursday at 10 p.m. Um, and then, you know, we have the spinoffs. We're currently shooting Stevie J spinoff and uh, K. Michelle. I, so we're yeah, in, fix, yeah, uh, the third K. season. K. Michelle Fix My Life, is it? No, no, no K. Michelle, this is. This is yes, my life. Yes, exactly. This is my life. Um, how is it? Are you on the day to day sets mm -hmm. sometimes of, of, of these reality stars or do you take more of the executive role? Yeah, in the beginning, now, we saw you in the beginning. I was on set physically a lot more than I am now. Now right. we've got a great team who kind of knows how this sausage is made. You know, shout out to Stephanie Gale and David DeGange and then all of our showrunners who are in charge of each show individually. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking all day, every day. You know, we have constant calls where we go through what we're covering with the talent and what needs to happen for the day. But I don't get to make it to set you know right. as right. often i mean if there's something major happening you know i'll show up for that but for the most part these guys know how this machine yeah. runs yeah. yeah and you literally started from the ground up building mm -hmm. this machine mm -hmm. and build it into a very successful empire for yourself yeah it's it's done pretty well it was like lightning in a bottle yeah 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 did you think that the match would have struck and, and ignited. ignited the way it did? I don't know if any of us did. I was speaking on a panel earlier, and I talked about how, you know, after the first season of Love & Hip Hop, the ratings were okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't monumental to the extent that we expected a pickup. But what was amazing was the connection with the audience, mm -hmm. and especially the social media aspect mm -hmm. of it all, because people started talking about the show. It became kind of a part of their dialogue and a part of their culture. So even after the show would go off air, and even after the season was over, people were constantly still talking about the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that the network understood that there was something special happening there. Because yeah. very rarely do you have that kind of connection right. with a show where, you know, people are really kind of embracing it as part of their everyday dialogue. And it's constantly trending. And it's constant. Yeah. It does incredibly well. You on know, uh, on Monday nights, we beat out most sports programming, which is hard to do because yeah. sports usually dominates, you know, mm -hmm. the ratings and, and social media. But we do pretty well. Yeah. yeah. You know. You, sometimes, Mona, I read articles that are very, very good mm -hmm. about, you know, the franchise. And then I read some that are a little biased. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any sense of, like, uh, responsibility for, like, when the questions come up about, you know, oh, we the depictions of African Americans and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure you get that question uh, asked to you a million and ten times. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when you speak on panels, people have... Those things, opinions about opinions that stuff, about sure, absolutely. That. I mean, listen, I, I, I think I've talked about it ad nauseum, but for the most part, it, it's about the fact that we should be allowed the full range of who we are, right? We are everyone that we see on the show. I think a lot of times people react so strongly to the cast on the show because they recognize themselves. They recognize people that they know, people in their family potentially. Mm -hmm. Why are we not afforded that same opportunity to show the full gamut of who we are? We're not monolithic. We're not the same way all the time. It's okay that we have yeah. that uncle that, you know, is great at the family picnic, but you're not going to bring them to the company picnic. Yeah. You know, it's all good. And I think the sooner we start to embrace kind of all those sides of who we are, yeah. right, the better off we'll be. But I also believe that there are tons of depictions on television right now. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to the audiences to support all of those depictions, yeah. right? Because ratings rule. That's all the networks um, yeah. are looking for. Yeah. Who is watching what? And the reality of it is, I always liken the franchise to a Spice Girl album. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions of records sold, but nobody wants to admit to buying one, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody, I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. We what? rate extremely well. That means that the show and the franchise is connecting with our audiences to some degree. Yeah, when you're speaking of, you know, 
the record side of things. You mm-hmm. came from the I music. came from music, and that's why, you know, the stories that I tell on Love & Hip Hop, it's not like we're just making stuff up, pulling it out of the air, trying to represent, you know, African women, African American women as negatively as possible. This show was never put forth as the ultimate Bible of African Americans in America, mm-hmm. right? This is this slice of the population, and I know this slice well because I lived it. Mm-hmm. I managed the men in the music industry. I know what those relationships are. I know a lot of those women. And this is giving them an opportunity to leverage and showcase their lives mm-hmm. as they see fit. No judgment. Do you ever see yourself getting back? Or going back to the music side mm-hmm. of things in terms of I know you work with Nicki. I with st- the, no, well, I still alcohol. manage Missy Elliott. You still work Let's with not Missy. forget, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Still work with Missy. Still work with Missy, and we just had an incredible run. You know, going back to the Super Bowl a couple years ago, we did the Let Girls Learn project with Michelle Obama. We did that great James Corden piece. Just honored her. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had the opportunity to have my worlds converge, where I was able to executive produce hip hop honors, but honor Missy as well during I that, that process. That was an incredible piece of Thank work. Thank you. That like was I exciting. Was, I was there in the audience like a super fan. Right. Because I, I was a super those, fan yeah. too backstage. I was like wow. That was for me one of those moments where you really are able to see like all sides of your life converge and come together beautifully. Yeah. yeah. Do you see yourself producing like films like t- like you know, big screen. Absolutely. Is that something you're working towards now? Absolutely. Working towards scripted, working towards um, features as well. And continue to Do you have anything in play you want to share with us? Uh, It's a little early. I mean, there are tons of things. I'm constantly trying to reinvent, Mm -hmm. right, what I'm doing. The Mix Moscato was an opportunity for me to move into another industry. I just launched a Love & Hip Hop mobile app. I saw that. So, yes. I see that in the commercial. I'm like, like, you think you got what it takes get in the game. Yeah, and you got the girl with the bubble (laughs) booty and all of that. Yeah. (laughs) And you wanted to do something. My son is uh, 19 now, and he actually was saying that, you know, there are no games out there that are reflective of the way he looks and his friends and the girls that they're into. So here when you go, and it's it's available for download, uh, iOS, Android, but um, you have a chance to customize the way you want to look so hair does your color kind of help you everything. out with those with those type well of my things? son is a little older it's interesting um because they actually didn't watch the show until yeah. very recently my daughter's now 13 my son is I was 19 because they were pretty young when it started they were though. young when it all started but they've always been in the industry tangentially because i was managing for so long but um my son was uh helpful with the game, because I actually asked him to take a look, tell me what's working, tell me what's out there, how do we compare. Yeah. Yeah. How do you keep your finger on the pulse? Um, you know, music, I always felt kept me young, you know, because it's, it's about just staying connected to who the consumer base is. And um, that was really helpful. My kids are, you know, a great source and resource for me, just picking their brains constantly. But even now in television, you know, the coveted 18 to 35 demo, I'm a little bit beyond that. Uh-huh. But I stay, try to stay connected with that evolution of what the consumers want. Yeah. And you're also a wife, too. So, yes. you know. When you're in management Mm -hmm. and you're in management positions, Sometimes when you get home, it's kind of hard to take that oh, hat off. Absolutely. How do you? <laughs> my my husband is the first one. Like when I walk, Ert! like leave yeah. that at the door. You're yeah. not at the office. I don't work for you. Yeah, don't talk Stop. to me yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> like who do you, you think this is? Hot 97. It's I hard. Get that all the time. <laughs> like it's hard to turn that energy off because especially when you spend all day, you know, trying to get things done and moving at 100 miles an hour to get home and have to, you know, rein that in is not so easy. And I think. What's good for me is that I live in New Jersey, right? So by the time I get in the car, I always say as I'm driving home, I start to declaw. And, you know, everything kind of comes back to normal. And I try at least by the time I come in to, you know, kind of shed all of that energy because you don't want to bring that into the home. What what about, because I'm a mom too, Mm -hmm. and so what about that mom perspective? Because sometimes I find myself micromanaging Mm -hmm. my son. Right. No, we like this. Do this, like, and then I find myself managing oh, every aspect of, like and and it drives them crazy because yeah. it's like, oh gosh, you're not at work anymore. Yeah. But also, I remember, you know, uh, what they see and what they experience with you is also it shapes who they are. Yeah. You know, I remember at a very early age, my daughter, she must have been around five. You know, she went to the the, the fax machine and picked up a stack of papers uh-huh. and took a calculator and put it to her ear and was like, "Hold on a minute, mommy, I'm doing my contracts." <laughs> and it's like she I realized. 
mimicking you. She was mimicking me. Yeah. And at first I was mortified because I'm like, oh, my God, is that the memory? Yeah. She had, but then I realized that that's also good to witness. Yeah. And it's helping to shape, yeah. you know, who she is. Do you ever feel, because I think I'm at the uh, phase of feeling a little guilty because my son is still small. Oh, there's tons of guilt. Yeah, like yeah. guilty in terms of like, if I can't make everything I right. can't make everything. I'm not there. There's a lot of guilt that goes yeah. with it. You know, I, I think all the time, am I going to wake up one day and have them turn around and say, you know, you were never there. Don't yeah. try to tell me what to do now. You know, yeah. it's about the quality, not the quantity. You know, the yeah. time that you can spend. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday, I was um, supposed to be picking her up because her dad wasn't available to and it was like getting me to leave the office. I was hanging on to everything and then it was like, oh, my God, my daughter's out there waiting for me. Yeah. And it's so funny because I jumped in the car and I told the driver, pick her up at school. But the school, he had just dropped her off at her music school, which is like miles away from her school school. So I said that to him and kept on and looked up and realized we were in the wrong town. Yeah. So, you know, it just it's it's the juggle and the balance. But yeah. we can only we can't yeah. beat ourselves up for it. Let's, let's I know we got to wrap, but let's talk about glass ceilings. You yes. know, in this industry, they a lot of times we as women get put in a bubble, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to break through the glass ceiling sure. or a lot of times uh, people put us where they think we should and be. And I have an idea, you know, I have a thought process about that. A lot of times I feel like we put ourselves in a self-imposed bubble, mm -hmm. right? We listen to what people say we should and should not be able to accomplish. We allow that stuff to shape our own thinking and actually set limits for what we do accomplish. So it's really, uh, again, another thing I talked about at a panel earlier today, mm -hmm. you know, it's like these blinders. You have to put blinders on, not to be oblivious to what's going on around you, but so that you don't get distracted and uh, you don't yeah, allow okay. other people's, you know, preconceived, notion. preconceived notions or limitations yeah you know, be yeah. imposed on you. You have to set your own bar and you have yeah. to work to work, you know, accomplish at that level, not anyone else's. And hopefully you've set it high enough that you're surpassing everyone else's. And, and with that, people will say, oh, you're a bitch or you're this or you're that. Yeah. But I always believed in those blinders. Mm -hmm. Like, because you shut out the noise. Not only that, there's that meme that was so great this summer uh, around the Olympics that was circulating with that swimmer who was so busy looking over. Oh, yeah. that they. It's like you cannot compare yourself to, you know, think that someone else is doing something you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Because if you should have been doing it, it would have been yours yeah. to do. Yeah. That's their it's journey. Timing. That's their path. You have to stay focused on your path and not allow yourself to be distracted. What are the three things that, before we go, what are the th three things that you think have made you successful um, in your um, life? Like, mm -hmm. for me, I always say in my right timing mm -hmm. and preparation and mm -hmm. always be prepared. Absolutely. And when people don't, and outwork. Mm -hmm. When you out, nobody can ever say you weren't prepared or you didn't yep, yep. outwork. Absolutely. I don't believe I in those. I so would what are say some of the things you believe in? Perseverance, mm -hmm. right? Sticking to something, not allowing yourself to be distracted, detracted, or just, you know, d um, persuaded to do otherwise, other than what it is you set your mind to. You have to be persistent. Also, knowing your business, right? Being clear about what it is you want to do, your goal, your business, whatever it is, clarity, right? Having that clarity because whether it's to help you accomplish it or mm -hmm. to communicate it to other people so that they know how to help you accomplish it, you have to have that clarity. And faith, you know, faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in the people that you empower to help you get to where you're going. You have to have those things in order to, you know, be successful. Yeah, and I think that's dope. So thank you, thank you for stopping by. It's Mona Scott Young, everybody. And you. this is Circle of Sisters 2016. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm having great. a great time today. Good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming with that <laughs> colorful blue <laughs> and that lay to the that guy here. That mixed blue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.